So I can't help, as I'm here, thinking about when I first became involved with Elevate Network, at the time, 85 Broads, and the handful of years since then. And I remember, not at this conference, because we didn't have it at the time, but at the different events that we did, just being so excited about the conversations we were having and the energy we had around advancing women in business. I mean, we were talking about it. We all knew what we needed to do because there was book after book after book about how to know your worth, how to get ahead, how to take the seat at the table. Really, we were on our way. We were moving ahead in business. And by the way, if it didn't work for us, if we asked for the raise and didn't get it, if we asked for the promotion and didn't get it, then we just didn't follow the recipe very well, right? And we could go back in the marked up book and check it out. But what was so exciting was the power to advance. We owned it, right? It was something that each of us individually controlled because we had the recipe. Oh, and we were just about to elect a woman president too. And then, that didn't happen. And then we sort of all took a little bit of a step back and recognized that we'd made very little progress. We'd had a lot of activity and a lot of discussion, but we sit here today and that gender pay gap, we are years away from closing it for Asian women. We are decades away from closing it for Caucasian women. We are 100 plus years away from closing it for black women, and we're 200 plus years away from closing it for Latina women. It hasn't moved. The, pay, the gap on boards, not moving. And we sit here today, Fortune 500 CEOs, we have more of them named John than we do women. And I don't know about you, but I know some Johns who aren't really that smart. incredibly depressing, except, except sort of quietly, this came up a little bit in the last conversation, we're finding a new way. Historically, if I'd had a few glasses of wine, I might talk about how the patriarchy and our society did a really good job of separating us, right? Those, you know, that, um, pop culture that we were following on how to get ahead said we could do it individually. It was mentioned in the last panel um, that if there was one seat at the table and you wanted it, you were separated from the other women, right? I knew when I went to sort of work outings and there was the group of men and there was the group of women, whoosh, right over to the group of men because that's where the power was. And so they separated us. And what happens when you're separated? You're weak. Forget, by the way, we're more than half of the workforce. Forget, by the way, that we control and direct 80% of consumer spending. Forget that we control $5 trillion of investable assets and with our spouses and other six. Somehow we got convinced that we needed to be empowered, right? Not that we had the power, but that we had to be given power. And we were separated. We're now coming together. And so it really started with a Gretchen Carlson calling out the issues at Fox. It extended with a Susan Fowler calling out the issues at Uber. It continued with the actresses calling out Harvey Weinstein. I too enjoyed the picture of him in handcuffs. Fantastic. It continued with the women of the New York Times coming together. And whereas if one of them had asked for a more generous family leave, I'm sure she would have been told no. They came together and got a more generous family leave, which by the way is good for women and men and families, oh, and people. The women of Nike, rather than waiting for HR to sort of figure out the culture was toxic, did their own survey, pulled together the information, came together and are changing that organization. What is the theme here? It's women coming together. Women marching together, women coalescing, and women engaging with our companies in positive, constructive ways 
to make those companies better. That longer family leave, you know how long it takes a family leave policy of 12 weeks to pay for itself? Less than a year. It's a great thing for companies, right? Well, well wait a minute, you're paying for family leave. I mean, that's gotta cost something. Yeah, but what we typically don't do is take into account that when you have a longer family leave, parents are more likely to come back to work. And you don't have to replace them. You don't have to train the replacement. It's not an expense, it's an investment. And as business people, we all know that investment that pays for itself in a year is an investment you do all day long. So coming together is really what's different and leaves me more optimistic about our advancement. But I want to put another thought in front of you. We need to see what's in front of us. And we need to call a spade a spade. So for me, having worked my career on Wall Street, you know, it took me a really long time to unsee things. I'm not, I don't mean that, guys. So what, whatever dirty thing you're thinking, stop it. <laughs> there was sexual harassment, et cetera. But, but, you know, when you're a fish, you don't know there's water. So when I was on Wall Street, you know, I accepted what they all said, which is women don't invest as much because they're risk averse or they need more financial education or they need more hand-holding. The industry blaming women for not investing as much. And I bought into that too until I dug into the research and recognized that women are risk aware. Not that we won't take risk, we want to understand risk. And I could go on, but I went through a process in which I started to re-see things and, re and question what had been conventional wisdom. I'm gonna ask you to question a bit of conventional wisdom with me. It's around meritocracies. Meritocracies, sort of like mom and apple pie of capitalism. I mean, what's better than a meritocracy? A meritocracy, you hire great people, you sort of direct them, you send them off to do what they do, and then you pay them if they're successful. But you give them the elbow room to create, to innovate, to drive the business. And what are more, what's mer more meritocratic than my industry, Wall Street? Right? Core meritocracy. What, what's another meritocracy? Venture capital. Right? These are businesses that must be meritocracies in which these businesses are money businesses driving capital to the best returns. So therefore, they will find the best talent. And if it just so happens that the best talent is more white males, so be it. It's a meritocracy. And so today on Wall Street, 90% of traders are male. 86% of financial advisors are male. 90% of mutual fund managers are male. 95% of hedge fund managers are male. Over on the other coast, 95% of venture capital partners are male. Those males are so damn good at their stuff. <laughs> I mean, they're so good. They're 90 to 95% of these, by the way, quantitatively measured jobs. That's amazing. They're so good. They're so good I married a male. <laughs> Actually, two of them. <laughs> Not at the same time. Stop it. Your minds again are going into the gutter. Get them out of the gutter. But here's the problem. Women are better investors than men. Yeah. Right? Women? We're better hedge fund managers, we're better mutual fund managers, we're better individual investors. Where's that meritocracy? Where's that meritocracy? And who here thinks traders, 90% male, mostly white? Who in the room, raise your hand high, thinks the financial crisis would have been worse if that had been 50% women? 40% people of color. Who here thinks it would have been worse? It's a meritocracy, it should be the best people. Meritocracies, they don't exist. They're mantocracies. <laughs> and the thing that's so amazing about this is the power of our society, of the way we've been socialized, is so strong that these money industries 
are overlooking the facts that these guys are not 90% of the best in, at the expense of making more money, right? You think this is capitalism, this is where capital goes, capital's gonna find the best folks. But, the, but the, it, we override it because we've been socialized to such a great degree and we women believe these are meritocracies because we've been brought up. They're mantocracies. And so I would urge you so let's keep opening our eyes to this, to the things that we believed before, just as a given, may not be true. Why do we care about what's going on in Wall Street and Silicon Valley? We care because of financial crisis. By the way, gender diversity on Wall Street has gone backwards since the financial crisis, so it's not better, it's worse. And we care because these are the folks who are handing out the money. These are the folks who are choosing which businesses live and which businesses die. Venture capital, is it any surprise that in an industry that's 95% partners are male, that women get, depending on the piece of research, 2% of the venture capital dollars, women of color get an amount that rounds to zero. By the way, this is despite the fact that women-run businesses, according to First Round Capital, venture capital businesses, have 63% better returns than male-run businesses. Again, the way we've been socialized overriding the facts. And it's not as if venture capital has had such great returns. Their returns for the last five, 10, 15 years have been about as good as the public equities with substantially more risk. What the hell are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna come together. And for those of us who can invest in women businesses, in crowdfunding sites, we're gonna do it. At Elevest, we now have a new option in which you can invest your money behind other women. You may be thinking, God, that gender lens investing sounds a little weird. I don't know, invest behind other women. Huh, Sally did just mention the returns, the results are better, but I would urge all of us to remember we are gender lens investing today with our money. We're just investing almost 100% in men. And so if we begin to move a bit of our money over, whether it's on crowdfunding sites, whether it's in our individual investments, et cetera, we can change the world. We can change the world by investing each other promoting each other, mentoring each other, buying from each other, just as the guys have always done. This is not, this is not about excluding the men. It is about including the women. And I will leave you with one thought. At a time in which our society is a little topsy-turvy, we all know the best thing you can do to improve society is to get more money in the hands of women. Because when you get more money in the hands of women, they put more money into their family and into their communities than the gentlemen do, and they give more money to nonprofits than the gentlemen do. And so this isn't a selfish thing we're doing. This is something we're doing that will make the world a better place for all of us. Thank you.